gates of heaven. Good morning, good morning, good morning, storehouse. I want to welcome you here in the sanctuary and those on social media. And we're going to invite you this morning to worship with us, to bring a praise to our Heavenly Father that He receives as a fragrance, as an offering. So this morning, let us worship His name, let us praise, and let us give Him all we have, because He is a good, good Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a table that you've prepared for me In the presence of my enemies It's your body and blood you shed for me And this is how I find my battles There's a table that you prepared for me In the presence of my enemies It's your body and blood you shed for me And this is how I fight my battles And I believe you overcome And I will lift my song of praise for what you've done This is how I find my battles This is how I find my battles This is how I find my battles This is how I this is how I find my battles and this is how I find my battles and this is how I find my battles and this is how I in the valley I know that you're with me your goodness and mercy follows me my weapons are praise and thanksgiving this is how i find my battle and i believe you overcome and i will lift my song of praise for what you've done this is how i find my battles this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Así peleo mis batallas, así peleo mis batallas, así peleo mis batallas, así peleo, así peleo mis batallas, así peleo mis batallas, así peleo mis batallas, así peleo. Aunque veo que estoy rodeado, estoy rodeado de ti. Aunque veo que estoy rodeado, estoy rodeado de ti. Aunque veo que estoy rodeado, estoy rodeado de ti. 
aunque veo que estoy rodeado, estoy rodeado de ti. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Heavenly Father, today, Lord Jesus, the word as I rode into church this morning in my heart was, be dressed in the full armor of God. So today that I pray that we as the church of God that stands before the presence of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, be dressed in the full armor of God, Lord. And that the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you have implanted in each one of us, Lord, are different gifts to fill the body of Christ, Lord Jesus. Let them be manifested today in each and every one of us here today. Within the sound of my voice, on social media, Lord, bless the homes, Lord Jesus. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, and I declare this in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Till I found at least a 99 And I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God Oh, the overwhelming love of God Oh, it chases me down and fights till I'm found at least the 99 I couldn't earn it and I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming never
fall, still your love far from me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. And you have been so, so just quickly go back into that part where it says no shadow you won't light up so we have to understand that we were the lost sheep and when he came looking for you when he came looking for you he went high he went low he went through every bush every mountain he went looking for you that's talking about a love that's so big. It's so amazing, so unworthy of me. I know where he pulled me out of. I know where he found me. I know where he picked me up and put me on his shoulders and carried me and treated me like I was there the whole time. He took a broken man and made him whole. He took an unclean man and cleaned him. So when you sing this, understand what you're singing. Understand the words that you're uttering. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. 
Come on, give it to him if you know about his reckless love. Hallelujah. And my jam. You are worthy of it all. Such a simple song. You are worthy of it all. But a powerful declaration. For from you are all things, and to you are all things, and you deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. the glory and who are we and all the saints and angels they bow before your throne and all the elders cast their crown before the Lamb of God and sing and all the saints and angels they bow before your throne and all the elders cast their crown before the Lamb of God and sing you are worthy of it all let's declare this church you are worthy of it all it's not for me for from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory Day and night, 
night and day let incense rise day and night night and day let incense rise day and night night and day let incense rise day and night night and day let incense rise day and night night and day let incense rise day and night night and day you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the Lord. once again everybody welcome god bless you guys today may the presence of god be over your lives in a mighty and in a powerful way we're not just storehouse church we are we are the church of god and when we sing he is worthy when we sing our god is champion it's not just to sing lyrics it's to declare a word over this world so let us declare and decree We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You've come to worship God. I want you to give him a clap offering from the bottom of your heart. Come on, church. Give it to him from the bottom of your heart. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, I don't know, I think you already know this, but just in case you didn't know, life is going very quick. And I think it's all these moments that we get to celebrate life. And don't stop celebrating even the little things in life. In a few minutes, we're going to acknowledge some champions. We're going to acknowledge some, some men and women 
that have done extraordinary things. So I'm going to ask you to sit down, but as they come up and as we recognize them, I want you to celebrate big. Celebrate big. Celebrate big means that it's like your last celebration. Celebrate big means like, right? It means the world to you. So we're going to just celebrate them and we're going to ask you to just join us as we celebrate them. So let's hear for Isma. Can we, can we welcome the 2021 graduates? Let's give it up. Hold on, I'll call you. You know, I don't know, me and you were talking this week that if we could raise that music a little higher. Because I don't know about you, we've got kids that have graduated, right? Wherever, I know you were a graduate a couple years ago. Every time I hear this music, it, it, it brings joy to me, but it also always gets me a little emotional, like, wow, kids are growing, kids are accomplishing great things for the glory of God. Can we give God a glory and honor one more time? Come on, church. I'm excited for your child. I'm excited. Isael Mendez, give it up, Isael. All right. Graduating from eighth grade, wow. Elian Mendez, graduating from high school and some college. Give it up for him. Awesome. Sariana, is that you? Give it up. Sariana Mendez, graduating an associate from college. Praise God. The biggest graduates today, give it up for Avery Serrano, graduating from kindergarten. Woo! Yeah! And her big brother, Jaden Serrano, graduating from high school, going into university. Awesome. A big champion at our home, Mateo Ramos, come on up, graduating from eighth grade getting ready for high school. Woo! And last but not least, give it up for a super, you gotta keep an eye on this guy. He is a super soccer player, Leo Gonzalez, graduating from high, eighth grade. And we leave an amazing leader, woman, Sofia Agosto coming up, graduating with high honors. Give it up to her. Awesome. We want you to stand with us. And we're excited what God is doing in their life. So I want you to extend your hand towards them. And we're going to pray that God will just bless them indeed. And I know already that you're going to do great things. And today's message, you're going to hear what is the secret for you to succeed. So let's give it up in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father... We thank you for these amazing graduates, God. Whether it be kindergarten, whether it be eighth grade, whether it be high school, whether it be associate, whatever it may be, Lord, you already knew that they would accomplish great things. So today we just bless them and we thank you for the next journey, Lord, that will go so quick. But I pray that they would enjoy it, that as the journey gets tough, as the journey gets challenging, that they will reach out to you and that you would give them supernatural wisdom strength and creativity in the name of jesus let's celebrate them one more time god bless you guys god is good praise god you may be seated god bless you all there's one one more thing we want to do before uh, we continue here and it's a special moment not only to us but I know it's a special moment to God, and I want to just give it up for Edwin and Vanessa. Come on up here, guys. Come on up here. And we're excited, man, because when we see you guys, we see what God did with us, you know? And we started as uh, youth pastors. Not knowing what to do, right? Not knowing what to say. And it kind of reminds me where you guys were at. But 
How many years? It was seven plus. I don't want to take the plus out. How much was it? Seven. That's a divine number. Praise God. So let's give it up to them as a thank you. Thank you for serving faithfully, serving honorably, and just uh, investing in God's kingdom. And on behalf of Storehouse Church and us, we just want to present you with this, okay? Take it, guys. And I want you to stand up. And I want uh, David and Louis, you're here, right? Melissa, come on up here. And Carlos and Izzy, come on up here. We're going to pray with you. If you could just stand here a little more to the center. And I can't wait. I was praying to God today. I said, man, God, I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. And it's amazing to be in a season where you're like, man, God, do what you need to do. Use me in whatever you need to do. And we're going to celebrate you big. But they say that a sign of a leader is when he develops other leaders, right? It's not all about me. It's not all about you, right? But leaders that God has allowed us to develop. And so for, we did, we, we're excited because the youth is, is, is growing right into two different branches, per se. So we're going to have chosen which are the junior high will be Melissa and Lewis. So let's give it up, Melissa and Lewis. They are going to continue to serve in Chosen. So if you have the age group, or if you're listening to me in social media, you got to bring them out Friday night. And then continuing on to vertical, the high schoolers, Carlos and Izzy Morales, let's give it up to them. They're going to be serving in that capacity. And I can't wait. I honestly can't wait for God to do amazing things. And I know that David is going to be just united with Vertical, and uh, David, you're, you're all over the place, so we thank God for you. He's a blessing to the team. He provides wisdom. He provides a lot of fun, I heard, right? A lot of crazy fun. So I want you to extend your hands. And before that, I, I, just, I just want to just hear a few words from you guys real quick. Ed, some words of your journey or how do you feel? It was an unbelievable experience. It, it was an honor to serve God, to serve this church in, 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 a, in that type of way, to serve young people. It was one of the best seasons of my life, definitely. Praise God. Ditto. Um, seven years, God definitely stretched us a lot during that time when we were asked to be youth pastors. We were like, hmm, us? Why? <laughs> but we thank God for it. We truly do. We learned so much, God stretched us and used us a lot and we built beautiful beautiful relationships that we'll hold on to forever i have some of the youth call me their best friend like i think that's <laughs> i think that's an accomplishment but we're just grateful that god used us in that capacity and we're also excited to see what he's going to do next amen us. i can't can't leave these guys out um without you guys we could not do anything really so thank you guys for being there with us every step of the way Let's give it up for a great team, a great team. You want to share something? You no, know, I just want to say a few words because God gave us, um, God gave me the privilege of, of having you guys under my pillar. Man, it was so much fun. Because <laughs> we came out with some crazy ideas and, and some great plans and some amazing meetings where I think not only you guys grew, I grew. You know? And God says, no, trust me for more. Amen. Trust me for yes. more. No, don't, you're, you're, tr you're believing too small, Miriam. Believing too small. So every time I push you guys, I say, oh my God, they're going to quit. This is the year they're going to quit. But man, you did it for seven years. Strong. And I Amen. thank God for yes. that. And I thank you for the teams that you guys have been able to bid, build along with you guys. And I love it that you guys, you know, despite of all, maybe the negativity or some stuff that we heard that were not positive, you continue to press on. And that says a lot. That says a lot about a leader. So I thank you, you guys. I love you guys so much. I'm going to miss our meetings, but I know we're going to have other meetings. <laughs> I don't know what, where, what ministry, but I know it's going to happen. But I love you guys, and I thank God for what the seeds that you guys have sown. And now we've seen the harvest. Amen. And we're going to see it so much greater in our days. So I'm excited. And I love the team, that, the new team that we have now. Let me tell you, church, let's give it up to the new team. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness, I am like super duper excited of what God is yet to do with them. You know, it's such an honor, privilege to be able to serve with you guys and I cannot wait. You know, I cannot wait to see what God will do. Amen. Amen. So extend your hands. We're going to bless them. The word of God says that everything you touch will continue to prosper in the name of Jesus. So extend your hands. You might not know them in social media, but you, have a, you might have a heart for young people. So we're just going to bless them in the next season that God will do amazing things. So Heavenly Father... 
I thank you for Ed, Lord. Thank you for his leadership. Thank you for just stretching him, Lord. Thank you for the mighty work you're doing in him. I pray for him. I pray for Vanessa, Lord, as she continues to grow, Lord. Thank you for her sensitivity to your spirit, Lord. We just declare an overflow of blessings for them. Continue to watch over them. Watch over their three children. And just continue to do amazing things in their life, Father. We declare an overflow upon the new team, Lord. Upon David, Lord, that you would use them in a mighty way. Upon Lewis and Vanessa, God, as they minister to the young junior high, Lord, that there would be miracles, there would be healings, there would be breakthroughs, Lord. And just pray for Izzy and Carlos, Lord, as they continue to grow. Give them wisdom, Lord. Give them your spirit, God. Give them a fresh word for all the vertical, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we're going to celebrate you in advance. In the name of Jesus, let's give God one more clap offering. We serve a mighty God. Love you guys. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, it's so exciting, isn't it? Oh, man, I love what God is doing in our church. It's exciting. I cannot wait. I don't even know what's yet to come, but I cannot wait. I'm with high hopes and expectations, amen, of what God is yet to do with our beautiful youth in our church. I'm excited. Hallelujah. Man, as I was thinking about today and graduation, I get pumped up. I love it. As I sat down at my son's graduation, I'm like, oh, God, this is so good. I love it. I love to see accomplishments. I love to celebrate accomplishments because, man, it tells me that there's so much more to come. And as I was thinking, I said, man, Lord, may we learn, when we be a church that we learn to live at the top and not from the bottom, not always struggling, not always um, trying to have a hard and dramatic life, but meant that we may be able to live at the top. And I love that because I can see it in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 13. And check what this says. Check this out. It says, if you listen to these commands of the Lord, your God, if we listen to these commands of the Lord, your God, if Miriam will listen (laughs) to these commands of the Lord, your God, that I am giving you today, and if you carefully obey them, If Miss Miriam will carefully obey them, if our storehouse church will carefully obey them, it says here, the Lord will make you the head and not, and not, but he's going to make you what? The head. And you will always be on top and never at the bottom. Love that. Over 20 years ago, someone asked John Osteen, and he is Joel Osteen's dad. How did he apply his faith and he believed God for provision? And John said, I live at the top of the barrel all the time. He used this analogy to relate it to faith in God for provision. Someone else asked him, well, that's not faith, is it, Brother Osteen? And John responded, let me tell you something. It took a lot of faith to fill that barrel and it takes a lot of faith to keep that barrel full. Woo, I think that's powerful. God has called us to live the full and abundant life, church. Not just enough, not lacking, hallelujah, but more than enough. Overflowing, hallelujah. How does your barrel look today? Hallelujah. Oh, I hope yours is overflowing. It's full to the top. See, we can live that same way, church. I pray that we will be inspired to stop some of the thought patterns and behaviors that hinders us from being where we really want to be in life. And that's at the top. The Word of God has principles that can help us to achieve the top level living that we're living, that we desire. So no more barely getting by, church. You know, when someone acts you, praise the Lord. Amen. See, that little thing agree with me. Amen. That's a sign from heaven. Praise God. So no more barrel. <laughs> Things happen when I'm up here doing offering. Praise the Lord. That's glory to God. Amen. <laughs> even the props back there are speaking. Praise the Lord. So church, come on. Even the rocks will speak, right, on our behalf. Come on, church. Hallelujah. <laughs> so no more barely getting by. You know, if someone does ask you, man, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm surviving. Oh, 
I'm there. I'm hanging in there. No, we're not hanging in there no more, right? We're not just surviving. We're overflowing. Even if we don't see it yet, what's that man? We're at the top. My barrel is full. Because listen, when you fill yourself with the word of God, come on. When you fill yourself with God's promises, oh man, you got to live from the top at the top. So no more bottom of the barrel thinking. Whether it's your finances, your relationships, thoughts in your mind, or the desires of your heart, God has a richer, fuller, and more rewarding life in store for you if you live by the principle of his beautiful, perfect word. I pray that one day, church, you will look back at your life and you will see that your barrel never, oh, not, never once ran dry. In fact, God filled your life to a stable of overflow once you learn and apply his wonderful principle for living at the top. Stand with me, church. Oh, I want to be that woman. I want to be that vessel that lives from the top. Because, church, we have no reason to be living from the bottom when we serve such a grand God, such a big God that can do amazing and big and miraculous things. If you're barely getting by, man, you're not applying God's principles in your life. Live at the top. Live at the top of the barrel. Lord, we thank you, Father God. Ooh, what a powerful word, Lord. I want to live from the top, Lord. I want this church, Father God, to live from the top, Father God, overflowing with your joy, your peace, your abundance, Father God, your resources, Lord. That's the kind of church we are, Father God, and we choose to be. Oh, Lord, the storehouse, Lord, will live at the top, Father God, so that everyone else that needs to hear from you, Lord, who needs to hear that message of hope, Father God, and freedom and breakthrough, Lord. Oh, Lord, that we will be so full of you, dear God, that we will be able to give, Lord, Father God, what overflows from us. Oh, Lord, Father God, that we will be your hands and feet here on earth, that as we give our tithes and our offerings, Father God, it's because we're living at the top, Father God. So we give sacrificially, and we give you our best gift. It's not from the bottom of the barrel, Lord. It's from the top. We will give you our best, Lord. We will give you our best seed. Because that's the kind of God that you are, Lord. You deserve the very best from us because you gave us the very best, Father God. You gave us your son. And because we have your son, Father God, Lord, hallelujah, we can live from the top of the barrel. Oh, Lord, we have a life that overflows, Father God, with all of your goodness and blessings. Oh, Lord, that each of the graduates today, Father God, may know, Lord, and may strive, Lord, to live from the top of the barrel, Lord, that they will be so full of you, Lord, that they can do the impossible in this world, Father God, that they can do mighty things for your kingdom because they live from the top of the barrel. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Father God, bless each and every one of us that give today. Oh, Lord, we're giving you our best. And we love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say, church, amen. You may have a seat. There's different ways to give. And please, man, give to God. Give him your best. He's been so good. God bless you, church. Amen. Praise God. I'm excited, man. There's so much joy inside of me. And as I celebrate your kids, I see them for what they're going to be. I don't see, you know, Jaden just saying, I just graduated. I see you crossing another stage, doing amazing things for the glory of God. And as I was worshiping, let's give it up one more time for our graduates, man. Come on, let's give it up. Praise God. Praise God. As I was worshiping, I was looking at this, I don't know if you can see it in social media, but I was looking at this red carpet. And instantly the Lord just guided me and says, would you be able to walk that red carpet in heaven? Would your name be called in heaven? And when they call your name, how's that going to sound? And when they call your name, how's that going to look? How are you going to feel? It's 
See, today I want to talk to you very quickly about these men and women that just did amazing things, but I want to talk to business owners. I want to talk to people that want to walk that red carpet in heaven, not on earth, in heaven. I want to talk to you about transformational leadership. I'm not talking to you about a person that their goal in life is to make money, 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 money. That's not a transformational leader. I'm not talking to you about a person that wants to accomplish degree after degree after degree. That's not a transformational leader. I'm not talking to you about a leader that everything in life is about themselves. A transformational leader looks different. And in the next few minutes, I want you to ask yourself, am I truly a transformational leader? Or have I just been living for tomorrow? I have just been living to accomplish something? And here's the question that will answer if you're a transformational leader. If your actions inspire people to dream more, learn more, do more, become more, then you are becoming a transformational leader. If throughout the whole day, the Lord's going to give us 24 hours, right? Some of it's gone already. But if all we did, Nancy, is think about ourselves, about my things, about my life, I'm sorry to say, but we are not transformational leaders. And I'm wondering if you're even a leader in the definition of a leader. And in a few minutes, I'm going to read you some scripture of a powerful transformational leader. But one person with courage becomes a majority. And sometimes all we need is one person to stand up for justice. All you need is one person to say, you know what, I'm going to invest in that young life because I know they're going to do extraordinary things for the glory of God. And I'm not hitting on business owners today, but God's put that in my heart. In your business, how much have you invested for a bigger cause? Or has everything become about my business, my things, my profits, my stuff? See, organizations are not defined by things and properties and stuff, but they're defined by transformational leaders. As the leader is, Jesus, the organization will be. If the leader is into dreaming, if the leader is into visionary, if the leader is into trusting God, if the leader is about making an impact, it'll show in your business. It'll show in your home. And guess what, Vanessa? It's going to begin to show in your kids because you pass that transformational leadership DNA right into their lives. And before you know it, they're beginning to speak transformational. They're beginning to want to do something bigger. I want you to go with me to Joshua chapter 1. And it's such a powerful story. And it's going to go by so quick. But I want you to grab it. And I don't just want you to read it. But I want you to picture yourself in the midst of this powerful story. And I want you to go further. I want you to ask yourself, what would you have done if you were in the midst of this mess? How would you have reacted if you were in the middle of this situation? Kind of reminds you a little bit of what we just saw, right? A transformational leadership. Served seven years. They didn't make it about themselves. They made it about investing in young lives for the future. Not only that, they took more leaders, developed them, and now you experience and you get to witness, you get to see transformational leadership. I'm going to throw it out there for social media. Who are you investing on? If no name comes to your mind, then we need to work on that. Because when I get to heaven, when they roll out that red carpet in heaven, I think one of the questions that the Lord God Almighty is going to ask me is, what did you do with the gifts and the talents that I gave you? What did you do with the influence I gave you? What did you do with the money I gave you? What did you do with the resources that I gave you?
And if we don't have much to show, I think we have missed our whole purpose and calling for living on this earth. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. I want you to get creative and envision yourself in the midst of this. It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, say, Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, aid. Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I'm about to give to you. Not only the graduates, but many of you guys, the Lord God Almighty wants us to cross the Jordan because he's getting ready to give you an expansion of territory. But if I'm afraid, if I'm scared, if I'm telling God I can't, I don't know if we will cross the Jordan. In verse 3, he's very specific. He says, I will give you every place where you set your foot on. Isn't that powerful? Man, how I took that word and I started getting excited. I said, wow, the Lord says that he will just deliver everything and anything that I place my foot on if I dare to cross the Jordan River. I don't know what's your Jordan today. Maybe it's a lack of resource. Maybe it's a lack of something. And and you're beginning to think like, Lord, I can't cross the Jordan River. Verse 4 says, your territory will expand from the desert of Lebanon to the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittites country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. And I love verse 5, it says, no one, say no one, will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Man, I can grab that Pastor Amber and run out of here, says, man, the word of God just told me that everywhere I step on, he's going to bless it. The word of God says that he's going to be with me and then no one will be able to stop what God has called us to do. So if you're a little iffy, if you're a little doubtful, right? If you're wondering, who are you? A daughter and a son of royalty. Man, you should be able to, Elian, Elian get, to get to, to that university that says, you know what? I am a son of God. I am here and I'm getting ready to do some amazing things for the glory of God. Why? Because the scripture tells me so. Why? Because I want to become a transformational leader. I went to two funerals this week. Honorable. Not once that they talk about the individual that left all this money, that had these huge properties, that, that did this, that that. They spoke about his servant. They, they spoke about his courage. I wonder what they'll talk when when our our book closes. I'm pretty sure they're not going to talk about like where you live. I'm pretty sure they're not going to talk about where you work. I'm pretty sure they're not going to talk about who you knew. They're going to talk about your transformational values. They're going to talk about the legacy. They're going to talk about your compassion. They're going to talk about your generosity. They're going to speak about what kind of impact you made in lives. And in verse 6, this should become one of our main theme verses of your life. That as you get ready to retire, as you get ready to, to graduate, as you get ready to do amazing things in life, that you would always grab this. It says, be strong and courageous. Say courageous. Because you will lead these people to inherit the land that I swore to the ancestors to give them. And in verse 7, he repeats it again, just in case you forgot. It says, be strong and very courageous. 
What does very courageous mean? That when life gets tough, when schoolwork gets challenging, when the economy collapses, when your business is not doing too well, when things are not falling in place, the Lord God Almighty says, be very courageous. Some people only like to be in the midst of something when it's easy. When all the money's there, when all the friends are there, when, when, when everything is well, then I'm in. The minute it gets challenging, the minute I didn't get a, a, a 90 versus an 89 in a class, right, Faith? I want to quit. I want to quit, so I'm done. No, the Word of God says, be very, very, very courageous. But there's a condition here, and I want all the graduates and business owners and future entrepreneurs to listen to this. Because sometimes people ask us, like, why is it that the Lord is always favoring on, on so many things that you place your hand on, that you invest on? Here's the secret. Here's the secret, and I think a lot of people miss it. It says, be careful to obey all the laws that my servant Moses gave you. And do not turn from them, from the right to the left, that you may be successful. Say successful wherever you go. Wherever you go. You're flying next week, you're going to be successful wherever you go. We live in a, in a culture that, that creates this fear that, that, that you're going to catch this, that this is going to happen. That, that no, bind that and rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And say, man, the word of God says that I will be successful, that you will be with me wherever I go in the name of Jesus. I'm going to challenge you. Do something scary for the glory of God. Not something safe. Something scary that will even scare you. It'll scare your wife, but it'll bring glory in the name of Jesus. And you're like, wow, I can't believe that I was very, very, very courageous. It says if you follow the word of God, right, then you'll be prosperous. Say prosperous. If you want to be prosperous in everything you do, I want you to lift your hand. That's about 90% of the church, and I don't know how many percent of social media, but can we celebrate that in the name of Jesus, that the Lord God Almighty says here, you're going to be successful, you're going to be prosperous in the name of Jesus. Prosperous means, Nancy, right? That I have health. Prosperous means that the Lord is blessing my children prosperous that I was praying and the Lord opened the door or the Lord closed the door or the Lord made a way where it seems so impossible don't define prosperous wrong as children of God we need to walk in victory in the name of Jesus and he says in his word here and in verse 9 it says have I not commanded you Oh my goodness, there goes that strong, that word again, loose. Be strong and courageous. Anybody feeling low on energy, man? Get into the word of God. I guarantee you in a matter of minutes, no more than an hour, your outlook in life is going to shift because you're going to become to get embedded with the word of God and you're going to realize it's not by your own strength, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. If you come through with someone that is always anxious, always scared, always fearful, always doubtful, I guarantee you they're not carrying the power of the Holy Spirit. They're operating under their own power. And they're believing that by their own strength, by their own money, by their own hookups, they're going to be able to do this. And they're missing the power of the Holy Spirit. They're missing the Word of God that transforms your entire thinking.
Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Is what he's telling Joshua. And towards the end of this scripture here in verse 10. Carlos Joshua didn't just hear a good word. A good promise. A good commandment. It says, so Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camps and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Say three days. Say it with authority. Three days. He told them three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in to take possession of the land. Some of us are in our second day and we're about to quit. And the Lord will tell you today, don't quit. Don't be discouraged. Be strong and courageous because your third day is about to arrive in the name of Jesus. How many are ready for your third day that you will cross the Jordan River in the name of Jesus in your life? I love Joshua because he spoke to the people. He didn't say, we may cross the Jordan River. We may get a victory. He was so clear. He says, in three days, you're going to cross. There will be a dry land. And he tells them exactly, he says, and we will take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving you for your own. And in Joshua chapter 3, Verses 1 to 4. I'm not going to go through the entire scripture, but he gave them so much instructions. He says, listen, the people of God are going to have the covenant. And when you see the covenant being brought, that is your sign to get ready to line up because we're getting ready to cross the Jordan. And he goes in specifically and tells them, I know we've never done this before. I know we've never crossed this river before. But can we trust the Lord? And sure enough, guess what happened? When the ark was coming, when the officers were coming, the people saw that. They gathered, they followed, they walked, they proceeded. Guess what happened? As soon as they stepped in, they stepped foot. It says that the waters split and that as the officers were walking and walking and walking, the word of God says that when they got to the middle, the people began to walk right through the Jordan River. Some of us got to be strong and courageous, be transformational leaders and be able to trust God more. I'm going to close with five things that would define a transformational leader. Number one, they possess a clear picture of what transformational leaders do. Transformational leaders see different. Transformational leaders speak different. Transformational leaders see problems as opportunities. Some of you guys are making more of a problem than what it is. And if you would just be courageous and strong, when you get to the Jordan River, the Lord God Almighty is going to open it up for you. The Lord God Almighty is going to make a way that you didn't even thought can be possible. A transformational leader focuses on their own transformation before leading others. If you're crooked, If you're a thief, if you're a deceiver, if you're a liar, I can't pass that on to someone else and all of a sudden it's like, I want you to be like me. Or I want you to be like you. Some of us got to work in ourselves before we even try to help others. Anybody a hot mess here today? Only three people. I know they're all in social media today. 
Just kidding. Keep on watching. See, transformational leaders, number three, they take a positive action based on their changes. Some of us don't realize, but I've been thinking about this so much. I don't know if it's because I celebrated my dad's 75th or because I buried somebody or because just life, I turned 50 and I started calculating like, Lord, what if I only have 25 years to live? Or what if, Lord, I have 40 years to live? What am I going to do with that life? What are you going to do with the rest years of your life? The same cycle, right? The same cycle, the same cycle, the same cycle, and you're going to do it for 25 more years. Or are you going to be a transformational leader, right? That when that red carpet in heaven comes up, the Lord will say, man, you didn't do, you didn't have much, but you did some transformation work. You did some amazing work. And you imagine you guys are standing in heaven and all of a sudden, all these young people pop out of nowhere. And they say, man, because you were a transformational leader. I made it to heaven. I made it to eternity. That's what I'm talking about. Can we give God a clap offering in the name of Jesus? Transformational leadership. That's making a difference for the glory of God. Two more transformational leaders create an environment that promotes positive changes. They're not going around messing things up. They're not going around disrupting or discouraging leaders. When was the last time that you encouraged someone? When was the last time that you had a solution for a problem that we're facing? When was the last time you came up to say, dude, you know what, I've been praying and God revealed to me that this is a solution to your problem. When was the last time we helped another child or a young man or young woman just, just fulfill their dream in life? Tell the person next to you, someone's about to get offended. Transformational leaders can handle that. Let me say that again. Transformational leaders can handle that. I had a comment in the memorial service I did. One of the sons came up to me. He goes, now I know who my true friends are. I said, wow. See, when you have all the money, right, when you have all the health, when all is good with you, your children, your family, your business, oh, dude, you got so many friends. Put you in a coffin. Let's see how many friends you got. Put you in a hospital. I wonder who will visit you. Put you in the midst of a major doctor appointment. I wonder who would take the phone and call you and say, man, let me just encourage you today. No, but it's all about me. That's not a transformational leader. That is a person that revolves in their own bubble and their own bubble and their own bubble. Now here's the hard part. Your bubble is about to pop. Because God wants to stretch you. God wants you to be a transformational leader and be able to see more than what you've been seeing. And the last one, transformational leaders commit to making a difference with others in your community. I wonder if I were to go to your community or your block or your neighborhood, what would they know you as? Jesus, a troublemaker. These two Puerto Ricans, Edwin and Jesus, that live in that neighborhood, they're a mess. No, no, they're transformational leaders, right? They see a problem, they address it. They see discouragement, they bring encouragement. They, they, they're feeling weak, they declare the power of Jesus Christ in their life. We got to make a difference in our community, church. We got to make a difference in our block. 
We got to make a difference in our universities. We got to make a difference in, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our places of work. They carry great values. They got the right attitude. They have commitment. They have competence. They have forgiveness. They take initiative. They have integrity. They have relationships. They have working ethics. Let me say that again. Working ethics. Any lazy people in the house? Because if you're lazy, you're in trouble. Because according to the scripture, it doesn't bring honor to God. I want you to stand with me. My last slide here, I started thinking about it. Twenty what? Can we put my slide? Twenty... 25 I'll be 55 yes whoa 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 it's right if the Lord desires that and wills me life but in those five years I want you to look at this carpet as we leave this place today in those five years What will I do to be a transformational leader? What would I do to be a transformational business person? What would I do to be a transformational mom, a transformational dad, a transformational grandfather, a transformational grandma? See, Mateo, before you know it, we are going to be doing this again. And we'll do it again next year. And we'll do it again in a couple years, right? Because life keeps on going and going and going. But if over these next four years, all I did is waste my time, all I did invest on my own self, I missed the higher call. I seriously want you to go home, whether you're in social media or in church, and I want you to ask yourself, over the next four or five years, what am I going to do to be a transformational man and a woman of God? Because when the Lord calls me and you home, that's what it's going to come down to. What kind of an impact did you make, Ed? What kind of an impact did you make this time? What, what did you do? What did you do? What do you have to show? I want you to lift your hands. We're going to pray together as we close today. Our prayer is going to be that God will give you new dreams. Our prayer is going to be that, Lord, that you would just orchestrate something out of nowhere, God, where me and you will be able to be those transformational leaders for the glory of God. I pray that eternity would matter so much to you and I that if we have a brother, a sister, a, a great friend or someone who doesn't know the Lord, that we would be so, so embedded and not rest, not be in peace until they become children of the Lord God Almighty. Father God, I thank you for this awesome Sunday you've given us, Lord. Thank you for all the graduates. Thank you for just giving them accomplishment. And the word of God we learned today, Lord, that you would allow us to prosper and succeed in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that we would be transformational men and women for the glory of God. That we will bring you glory, that we will bring you honor, that we will be sensitive to your spirit, God. That as you lead, Lord, we will be obedient. That as we get close to that Jordan River, Lord, that we will not be afraid but that, Lord, we will pursue forward and that you would open the waters in the name of Jesus. If you're believing and you're ready to be a transformational leader, I want you to give God a clap off. We said, Lord, I am so ready in the name of Jesus, God. And if there's anyone here in the church or anyone on social media that will love to accept the Lord God Almighty as your personal Savior.
so that when that day comes and that red carpet is rolled in heaven I'm not showing up and for the Lord to say dude you're not walking the carpet and I'll be like Lord but but come on man I did this this and that but like no no you were not a transformational leader you were all into yourself If you're in social media, man, so you to secure it's eternity. You say, man, I got to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I want you to write your name on the chat. It says, I do. And one of our pastors, we're going to come and pray and begin this journey with you in the name of Jesus. Can we thank God one more time for all our graduates? We're excited what God has done. Praise God. God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many transformational leaders we got in the house? Hallelujah. We got you watching us right here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Man, what a beautiful word. Oh, my God. I thank God for my husband. He's my number one transformational leader. <laughs> I learned so much from him, let me tell you. When God calls us to this ministry, and he was very specific how he called us, he told us we were going to be building leaders not just here in Chicago but all over the world. And I love that because that's the reason why we have the EPIC leadership program in this house. And God is doing something transformational here in this church. So, man, I am excited. Maybe, hopefully, by 2025, you have, been go you have gone through the EPIC leadership program. <laughs> and you will grow and learn and be challenged and be stretched like never before. It's amazing. Praise God. Church, we have a few announcements quickly. Uh, we have some connect groups still going on. We have Crazy Love with our beautiful sister, Tirsa Fernandez. And she has two more classes. So all the ladies, listen to me. Join in. It's on Friday via Zoom. You have no excuse. It's so good. Join in with her. God is doing great things um, on Fridays with the ladies. Also, this Tuesday, church, we all can be part of our Bible studies via Zoom on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Um, we're going to be going through the Kings, a journey through the Bible series. Tuesday at 7 o'clock via Zoom. It starts this Tuesday, the 29th, and we will be studying the book of Samuel and Kings. We will see a glimpse of ourselves and begin to understand our failings, our potential, and God's purpose through it all. So if you want to be part of this Bible study, man, join in, sign up on the website register so we can send you the zoom link and um let's meet up man it's a great time i'm there every tuesday let me tell you i try to be there almost every tuesday because it is so good and i'm taking notes and i'm listening and i'm like oh my god this is so good i love it i love learning god's word because it makes me better hallelujah amen you know if you want to be at the top right the top of the barrel you're going to be filled up with the word of god not of yourself because you're going to run short, <laughs> but of the word of God. Hallelujah. Also, we have youth ministry on Friday at 730 here. We have chosen youth and vertical. So please bring out your youth here at 730 on Fridays. And we have a five plus two project coming up. This is a new project. It's coming to our neighborhood where we will be having, I don't know if you guys started around the church, a community fridge. So stay tuned for more updates on that, okay? Also, if you, how many people here are not baptized and would love to get baptized? Come on. If you have not been baptized and you would love to get baptized, if you don't know what the heck baptism is and you would like to learn, classes will be starting soon. But baptism will be on July 25th. So sign up. Sign up. You know, so like that, man, you can experience, man, just drawing closer to God and knowing what, and knowing what, is, what it is to live out the new live your out your new creation your new life in christ okay it is a beautiful moment so sign up let's pray church what an amazing weekend right wow amazing weekend you know let's give god glory and let's give him honor lord we thank you father god thank you for this beautiful day lord thank you father god lord that you're so good you woke up us today lord you woke us up this morning i don't take it for granted father god you chose me to be alive this morning, Father God. What an honor and what a privilege. I don't take it for granted. I am so grateful, Father God. Lord, help us to live out this Sunday to the fullest, Father God, that we will choose to enjoy it, 
that we will choose to rest on you, Father God, that we will choose, Father God, Lord, to be able, Lord, to ponder on this powerful word that Pastor Lou has given us, Lord, that you gave him. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Father God. Lord, help us to be mindful how we live our lives, Father God, that when 2025 comes around, Father God, we can say, Lord, hallelujah, I had big hopes and big dreams and big goals, Father God, and I was able to accomplish it, Lord, because I'm living at the top of the barrel, Father God, Lord. Oh, Lord, because you have provided, you have given, you have helped me, Father God. I have drawn closer to you because I have dug deeper into your word, Father God. And I'm able to accomplish big things, big callings that you have given each and every one of us. Oh, Lord, so when we do a review of our lives in 2025, we will do it with a smile, Father God. Oh, Lord, but I only can imagine the biggest smile you will have on your face when you look down on us and you are so pleased with us, Father God. Oh, Lord, that is our goal, Lord, that you will be pleased with us because we chose to be obedient to you and to your word. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Thank you for life, Father God. Sometimes we don't celebrate life enough, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God. We love you and we thank you. Lord, help us to make great choices this week, Father God. Oh, Lord, Father God, that we will be transformational leaders wherever we're at in our jobs, in our homes, in our schooling, um, at home if we're not in school, uh, with our friends, Father God, that we may be that transformational leader they will be living by your perfect example, Father God. Oh, Lord, so we can show this world what it is, what it is to live our lives your way, Father God. We praise you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, Father God, take us home safely. And we all say, church, amen. God bless you. I love you all and have a blessed, blessed Sunday. Amen.